Hi guys, welcome to my brand new channel called Dig About. To give the rest of my videos some background, today I'm going to be concentrating on the timeline of our evolution with concentration to Britain. So I'm going to be covering from the Lower Paleolithic all the way to the Neolithic in this episode. Before we get into the depths of archaeology, it is important to state that the basis of archaeology is built up upon theories. We really need to keep an open mind that everything we are learning within these videos could be changed tomorrow. As like most subjects, archaeology has a whole load of terms that you've probably never heard before, so I'm going to explain some of them briefly to you. First up we have the term hominin. So hominin is used within human evolution to describe a species that is more closely related to us as homo sapiens than chimpanzees. Whereas a hominid is a term used to describe both the hominins and the great apes and their ancestors. So basically, a hominin is a hominid, but a hominid is not necessarily a hominin. Our next term is bipedal, and that means that they are walking on two limbs rather than four limbs. Right, enough of that, and let's get on with the episode. So today I'm going to be taking us way back to six million years ago. This is where we first separated from the great apes and we became bipedal. This hominin belonged to the genus Australopithecus. Some examples of these very early species are Australopithecus ramidus and Australopithecus afarensis. So the last one may ring some bells because it is very well known in relation to the specimen called Lucy. Lucy is known for being both bipedal having short legs, but really long arms, very small brain, large teeth, and a prognathic face. By 1.5 million years ago, there were 12 different species of hominins running around Africa with different adaptations and different characteristics. I'll dive into this deeper in another video. But what everyone wants to hear is about us, obviously. So we first evolved around 2 million years ago as the genus Homo. The first one was Homo habilis. The path to how we became Homo sapiens is very unclear. Our current theory is that we were Homo habilis, which evolved into Homo agaster, which evolved into Homo hygrobidensis, which then evolved into Homo sapiens. And this all happened in Africa. However, this is just a theory and we do not know this for certain. And each day with the change of science and new fossils being discovered, we are changing our theories. Around two to three million years ago, we start to see the hominins use control of fire, creating stone tools. They've got an increase in brain size, resulting in an increase of intelligence. And they also had plant and animal in their diets. 1.7 million years ago, we see the first evidence of the expansion of Homo into the rest of the world. Homo agaster, when it left Africa, is now known as Homo erectus. This group of hominin spread all the way to Asia. So this brings us sweetly into the Middle Paleolithic. Genetic work has allowed us to trace back evolution of Homo sapien to around 200,000 years ago. We have skeletal records that date to around this time. However, the scientific dating isn't necessarily very accurate because it is very hard to date this far back using bone. However, there is stronger evidence for atomically modern humans having evolved around 125,000 years ago. This is where we start to see evidence of our ability to control the space around us, create and control fire, and produce art within loose terms begins. The Upper Paleolithic begins with the successful expansion out of Africa of Homo sapiens. This is where our numbers grew, and we actually inbred with Neanderthals and another group called the Denisovans. Our development in tools and art grew, and we were able to create beautiful figurines such as the Lion Man and the Venus figurines. Due to the Ice Age, we had to retreat from a lot of Northern Europe, which means that our communities got smaller. Within this time, we do see the extinction of all other species of hominin, making us the last surviving hominin. The rising temperatures after the Ice Age brought on a new time period called the Mesolithic. 
previous studies have suggested that this group of people were very nomadic. So they moved around seasonally and hunted and gathered local crop and animals. However, there's new evidence coming from a site called Star Car that shows that this group of people had big enough civilizations to create a whole network and live there periodically. The introduction of farming wasn't just a change of communities and a growth, it was actually a change of people. Farming was invented within Anatolia around 11,000 years ago, and these group of people spread west across Europe and eventually reached Britain. Some genetic evidence have shown around Europe that these people did breed with the indigenous Mesolithic groups. However, within Britain currently, the evidence suggests that they wiped out the native Mesolithic people. This evidence isolated could suggest that Mesolithic people were completely wiped out, or it could be these two communities were living alongside each other and the remains that we find and are analyzing were just of this first group and there were no remains left for us to take genetic evidence from from that Mesolithic group. This period is best known for the introduction of farming, but also for their extensive feasting and monument building. Some of the best known examples are of Stonehenge, Avery and Newgrange, each holding a very different purpose and required a great amount of commitment, time and resources. I hope you really liked this video today and learned something new. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. More videos will be coming soon. I love fun facts. So at the end of each of my episodes, I'm going to be giving you guys one awesome fun fact. So today we're starting off with my favourite and that is... Cheese is the most stolen food. <laughs> Have an awesome day, guys.